It was interesting because at the same time it felt familiar, but it was very new. It was it had a lot of it was mixed in with a lot of different kind of genres, different themes. Uh, but at the same time, it was just an action movie and it's funny and had family themes into it. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, to me, I'm hoping that will be the defining characteristic of the film is the balance of action, certainly, and humor, but really story at its core. And uh, sometimes it's drama and action and humor are in collision with one another. And I hope that they are working in concert together in this picture to make a really complete movie going experience. And I'm hoping that it's a pleasant surprise to the viewer. And it sounds like you had a bit of that experience. Where well, you expect the action and maybe a couple giggles, but it's the point of, hey, I'm almost crying when he's teaching Haley how to ride a bike. And I'm really invested in this character. And you find yourself more invested in the film in general than you thought you might be originally. So to me, that's the hope of the movie. And that's kind of like your trademark for these um, action movies, where you kind of focus on the personal aspects of you know, the, the other lives. And why do you focus on that kind of side? I mean, I just, uh, I always like to take on material that I find interesting and uh, challenging. And of course, directing an Academy Award winning filmmaker is a big challenge and not easily done. And he brings out the best of you day in, day out. So this, with the pedigree of Luc Besson and uh, the opportunity to work with Kevin Costner, it seemed like an interesting challenge that could certainly be, you know, an original film in the end to the degree that you speak of, where it's more than what you expected and it makes you sort of, you know, cock your head to one side and just think about it a little bit longer than you were originally anticipating. And I like films that are complete in that regard and are more than just, okay, I knew what I was signing up for and it delivered and now I'm walking to the car. I like one that, you know, makes you think about it a little bit and say, you know, maybe I am spending a little bit too much time at work and I should focus on what matters most. And that's kind of the journey of the Ethan character. And he finds advice in, unorthodox relationships with, you know, a family squatting in his house with a gangster limo driver and a crazy Italian accountant, and they're teaching him how to be a better man and a better father. Yeah, those are some really funny scenes with, the, with Guido. Yeah, the pasta sauce, man, the pasta <laughs> the sauce. The pasta sauce, exactly. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Yeah, um, can you tell me a little bit about working with Kevin and Amber and directing Kevin as an action star? It's a little bit different. Yeah, it is, and then, you know, to me, that's what's exciting about it, is that I just, I approach filmmaking, I know exactly what I want to do, okay? So I wake up every day and I articulate to the actors, okay, this is what I think we should do, and this is how I think the scene goes down. And then with Kevin, for example, I then make a point of really listening, because I knew what I intended, and now if he can better that or have a different take as to how to achieve what I'd like to achieve, I'm all ears. It's the same thing with the director of photography or the costume designer or the production designer. I like to populate the film with very talented people, so the best idea always wins. And that could come from craft service or uh, a big heavyweight movie star like Kevin Costner. So what lies in the future of your career? Are you gonna keep doing like these action movies or are you gonna bridge into other genres and try to explore? Uh, no, I'm always trying to keep them guessing. And um, the next movie I'm gonna make is Spring Awakening, which is a Frederick Wiedekind novel that's actually of uh, German heritage. It's uh, a big hit musical that was on Broadway a few years ago and won a bunch of Tonys. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to tackle that and bring the synthesis of my two favorite mediums of film and music together. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that, sounds, that sounds really, yeah, that does sound a little bit different than... Yes, yeah, <laughs> there's, there's no karate and explosions, man. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a departure, but that's the way I like it. I like to keep them guessing, and I like to evolve as a storyteller and a filmmaker, and I just like all kinds of movies, and therefore I like to make all kinds of movies. Interesting. Um, can you tell me about, like, maybe a, a special scene or, like, one of your favorite scenes that you were filming on Three Days to Kill? Or a um, scene that maybe like stood out to you? I enjoyed shooting the opening of the picture. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I'd never been to Serbia. And we shot that film down in Belgrade. And it was very interesting. And just uh, sort of taking advantage of the Eastern Bloc culture and bringing it to this, you know, spy who came in from the cold kind of storyline. And I, I like the action. And I like, I just like that James Bond pedigree of beginning the movie with a bang, and then uh, the story starts to unfold from there. It's just, a, it's very comforting. Those were some of my favorite movies growing up, and I enjoyed that. And then, of course, I enjoyed shooting in Paris, and, you know, the car chase in Paris was exciting because we had to close down all these big Parisian boulevards. And um, I just liked working with Haley and Kevin also very much, and just seeing their dynamic was so pure and so relatable, and um, I think speaks to so many people. It was a joy to see those two masters of their craft work together. Yeah, and uh, another question is, um, this movie is PG-13, right? Likely, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the rating systems and all that stuff, does that hamper or maybe, I don't know, does it kind of change how you direct a film? You have to think about that? Or? No, I've never thought about that. I mean, 
I, I just uh, keep it honest and shoot from the hip and uh, worry about that afterward. I do think that it's intelligent to never limp into an R or a tougher rating around the world. I mean, for example, in Germany, I don't know how they classify the you know different ratings, but if you're gonna be a more mature rating, you wanna be Quentin Tarantino and get there. You don't wanna be like, oh, we said this word too much or showed a little bit too much violence and just barely got that rating. You wanna own it, you know? So either be PG-13, so to speak, or go all the way and get your Quentin Tarantino on.